Hello, everybody. It is me, Pacific. As I told you, I wanted to do a video on what Venus had written me about something that takes place every year in Barbados. I thought it was noteworthy. One, to spotlight a different culture. And two, to talk about the way the world is changing very fast. That people are doing things today that... If we're not careful, they won't shock us anymore, and we deaden our conscience. But before I start that, I wanted to say a word to my viewers. Some have made it clear to me that they are done with this channel. People have, because I've tried to take a more concerted, concentrated spiritual direction, some people are taking their ball and going home. I have noticed, and I've said this before, if I'm not attacking American women and blasting women, which seem to get the views up for the videos, if I'm not going round and round with some of the extremists of MGTOW, and I've taken a more concerted spiritual uh, focus, the views are dropping. They're down around 200 or less. And I ask myself, should I change? And the answer is no. We live in a world where if you really, really, there, there's different truth. You can have truth about American women. You can have truth about MGTOW extremists. You can have truth about trolls. And if I wanted to keep generating controversy, I could get involved in the put downs and the Duke them out and uh, the old wild, wild west. And I'm going to take on MGTOW and watch the views go because it goes back and forth. And I've decided, no, my channel is not going to be known for a American style campaign politics drama. I refuse to do that. I want to talk about things that are on my heart. I want to talk about things that I feel inspired to talk about. And I want to address a couple of things quickly before I go into the subject on Barbados. One. I do my videos in the closet, I do them in the garage, I do them in the backyard, I do them in my truck, and eventually I will be doing them on my school bus in between my break. It's been too hot, I don't want to put the computer in my pickup when it's 90 degrees and it gets 150 degrees in the cab of my truck. I want to wait till it cools down and there's days where I don't have field trips and athletics and ball games and other things going on so that I can take the time to do videos from the inside of my bus. I think that would be fun. And number two, the reason I do them in the closet here is sometimes there's company over and I come into the bedroom, shut my door, and shut the closet because it's kind of like a soundproof studio. They can't hear me out there. And it's not that I have anything to hide. It's that my voice is loud and I don't want to disturb them. I do it in the morning in the storage area of the house because they're asleep in their respective bedrooms that are far away from that. So th there's a reason I do that. One of it's out of respect. Sometimes I change the background scenery and I'm amazed at all the wags out there that comment. How come you yawn? How come you sniffle? How come you do it in a closet? Well, Sam, I am. I'll do videos from a roller coaster car. I'll do them from a closet from afar. I'll do them in the Philippines. I'll do them in Hong Kong. Yes, Sam, I am. I don't like green eggs and ham, but making videos, Sam, I am. I like that very much. I will make videos anywhere I please, talk about any subject I want, Sam, I am. No one can control me. No one can put a muzzle over it. This is Pacific Ocean Asia, Sam, I am. And I will say and do whatever I want, provided it's what I feel needs to be done. I will do videos in a closet in a bedroom in Colorado. I'll do videos along the waterfront in Hong Kong. I'll do videos in Australia should I go. I'll do videos in Barbados if that's where the wind blows. I will do videos wheresoever I have opportunity, Sam I am. And the reason I sniffle and snort and cough and clear my throat is because, Sam I am, I am human that I am and being human that I am and that I don't take drugs and I don't wear a suit and tie and sometimes I even have my shirt off, Sam I am. Some people just cannot accept that. 
but I am a man. And because I am a man and because this channel is real, if it is 93 degrees outside, rather than sweat profusely and have water stains under my armpits, I'd rather be cool and go with it. This channel's not for everybody, Sam I am. Some people do not like green eggs and ham, but some people like Pacific Ocean Asia, Sam I am, and those that like Pacific Ocean Asia will always be here. It tickles my heart, Sam I am, when people tell me they watch my videos from inside their car, or somewhere in Maine, or somewhere in the remotest parts of the globe and say I'm very sad when your video ends. Some of my viewers have caused me to shed tears, some viewers have caused me to smile, others have caused me to double over in laughter even when I'm driving my bus in traffic in rush hour and I bust up laughing and kids will say, bus driver what is so funny and I said oh nothing I just had one of those weird thoughts come through my mind. You guys ever have that? You know like in class when the teacher wants you to be all serious and you suddenly go Pfft! And they all go, yeah, yeah, we got you. Thank you. I don't tell them I was thinking about something my YouTube viewers said that's funny or some of the dumb things that a Meg Tawian will do. You know, <laughs> this, this, is, this is Pacific Ocean Asia, Sam I am. It is what it is. If people don't like it, they can go. But people come and people stay. And you know what? The views will drop down when you start talking about more controversial issues, such as Jesus Christ, the truth. Somebody wrote me this morning and said, you're starting to sound awful churchy. What does it mean to sound churchy? Does that mean that all of a sudden when I speak, people think of gothic and stained glass arches and starched colors and hushed tones? Yes, sister. God bless you, sister. Yes. No. Sam, I am. I don't talk churchy. No, churchy, I am not. But I have been bought by the Savior's blood. And some people don't like that. Sam, I am. They don't like green eggs and ham. They don't like Pacific Ocean Asia. I am. They don't like it when I talk about God. By the way, for those that think churchy talk and religious talk have you ever heard people pray and they say dear god that's that's spelled g-a-w-d we beseech thee almighty oh god doesn't that make you want to puke when pacific prays sometimes it's like lord please protect me Okay, let's get on with the subject. Venus Star gives me great stuff. I long for the day when we can do videos side by side because she would be a great side by side partner. And she brings up good subjects. When she wrote Larissa, the other half of the letter said, Thank you for mentioning the carnival festivals that the Caribbean islands have. Right here in Barbados, we have a festival called Cropover, which runs from, <clears throat> I think, June, July, or first, I think, June, July, and finishes in early August. There are a series of activities and lots of parties that happen throughout the Cropover season, which leads up to the grand climax, which, hap which happens in August. The big festival known as Grand Cadument, that's K-A-D-O-O-M-E-N-T. On the 4th of this month, our country had the big carnival Grand Kadoomen. From what I heard, the festival of Cropover never started off the way it is now, and the older generations who would have been a part of it when, I, when it was proper and decent cringe with embarrassment at what it has morphed into over the years. Now, pay attention to that, viewers. This woman was born and raised in Barbados, and she's saying that the old-timer said that Kadoomen, Grand Kadoomen, was nice once. It was decent. So even Barbados had some scruples at one time, but, but let's let's continue. How can I describe Grand Cadument Day? Hmm, I will be very blunt. 
Grand, Grand Kadumant Day is nothing but one big sexually explicit orgy with men and women from all walks of life, complete strangers, mind you, rubbing up on each other, masturbating one another, and sexually stimulating one another with their buttocks, hands, and bodies as they walk, parade, and dance from a particular starting point to the big destination, di big destination, which is a place called Spring Garden Highway. <clears throat> I do not know where this year's Grand Kadumant starting point began, I could care less, but the walk to the final destination is a good bit of walking to do. But it does not matter how far they have to walk to reach Spring Garden Highway because the music is blaring off of giant speakers in the back of hundreds of pickup trucks, people are drinking alcohol, the people dress up in extremely revealing costumes that leave nothing to the imagination. For women, they wear basically a skimpy bra and panty with colorful glitter, sparkles, beads, and feathers, and the men wear nothing short of a boxer pants with the colorful beads, sparkles, feathers, and glitter as well. There are many different types of costumes. <coughs> Excuse me. By the way, just so my viewers know, I've heard everybody in the break room today talk about all the allergies and, yeah, phlegm issues and everything else. Many of them said they lived in other places and didn't have this. So somebody asked me, why do I sniff a lot? Because it's Colorado. Boxer pants with the colorful beads, sparkles, feathers, and glitters as well. There are many different types of costumes, and the people who design the costumes are called band leaders. Yeah, leading them straight to hell. That's what she said. So you can have 500 to 1,000 people or more in a band all wearing the same costume and then another band can have 50 to 1,000 people wearing another different costume and on and on it goes. Visually, it is beautiful to see all the colors in uniformity, but all that glitters is not gold as you would know. Some women even wear thongs. An indent here, Pacific calls thongs butt floss. Just to show you how bad it can get, imagine a very fat black woman in a T-string underwear sexually moving her hips on a man's crotch area whom she does not know in public with people around forming a circle around her cheering her on as the man stimulates the act of rough and forced sexual intercourse from behind. Yep, nasty. And there are a lot of those morbidly obese people jumping in Grand Kadumen. Jumping is a term used to mean taking part in Grand Kadumen as an actual costume wearer and not a bystander. Things were so bad this year that even the local newspapers posted articles the next day showing pictures of a morbidly obese women and men with the faces blurred, showing how ridiculous Grand Kadumen is getting. I have nothing against fat people at all. Morbid obesity is another thing, especially when it could be controlled and prevented. But to see men and women that size carry themselves like they do in Grand Kadumen makes me sick. The government will never stop Grand Kadumen nor the Crop Over Festival because, listen viewers, Guess what? It generates over $1 billion per year. Keep in mind that the entire festival of crop over runs from June to the first week of August. This is a very short time, and look at how much money is made. Ridiculous. Viewers, I'm going to say something to you. Pacific has not made any money from his channel. I have not set up a PayPal account. I have not set up advertising because I did talk to some people. You have to have like a 1,000 views at a crack. To start making pennies on the dollar. When people leave my channel. And then you look at something like this. When people leave my channel. And you look at the channels that are getting the most views. What channels are getting the most views? Uh, can I be honest? Stupid ones. Sinful ones. People using God's name in vain. Women dressed inappropriately. Looking like sluts and whores. We're going to be doing a video. Probably tonight on the way public school teachers dress because I have just in the last week I've noticed stuff and I'm like, wow, this needs to be addressed. No pun intended. A billion dollars and the government's not going to change that because, well, look at Colorado. We're going to we're going to make recreational pot use into law because the state is now profiting. Folks, we're living in a time where sin is selling. Working hard. At McDonald's, Walmart, school bus driver, whatever. That is not glamorized in our society. This stuff in Barbados, people think that's cool. Let's read on. The local TV station this year, televises this every year, and I always have my TV switched off. Actually, this year, our church had a gender showdown between the men and women in our church because our pastor noticed that on Sunday mornings and Sunday nights, 
the women would always outnumber the men, and on Wednesday nights, the men would outnumber the women. So just for fun, our church agreed to have a gender showdown competition where we would invite people to church. Women invite women to get points for the women team, and men invite men to get points for their team. The team that lost would have to cook food for the winning team. We did that about two months, and on Grand Cadument Day, August 4th, while most of Barbados was down Spring Garden Highway partying and taking part in that giant orgy, our church family was to have a beautiful picnic. The men lost and the ladies won, so the men had to cook for us and serve us the whole day. It was fun, and the men cooked well. I would love to go to this church, viewers. The ladies in our church are always the ones who do the cooking whenever there is a function at our church. Our church eats together somewhat often, a few times a year, and food is a big part of our church. So it was actually rather nice having the men's service for once, and I enjoyed hearing them say that it was an honor to serve us ladies. As our pastor and his wife said, we will all go home that day knowing that we have done nothing wrong. We will go home knowing we did not engage in our engage in nor expose ourselves to any perversion and we will go home with a clean conscience knowing that we all had innocent fun something lacking in today's world and he was right when I went home that evening people were still celebrating Grand Kadumen in Spring Garden Highway and they would continue to party well into the wee hours the next morning but I felt so good laying in my bed knowing that I had a clear conscience and I did nothing to dishonor God oh what a feeling and that ends the letter. Let me sign out of this. Viewers, I like Venus Starr as a person. She is a wonderful sister. She has been an encouragement to me and very much convicting in the things that she holds to. And I really have met some great quality people on this channel. So if people want to leave and say, I'm done with this channel... I look at the video they're leaving that on. Pagans cannot judge Christians. Or can pagans judge Christians? I'm going to be saying some very controversial things, but things that I believe are true. In order for us to grow and mature, we have to believe the truth. We have to know the truth. And we need to talk about things. And we need to verbalize this stuff and say, look, this stuff in Barbados, from a Christian perspective, this is the kind of stuff that God would judge nations for. I mean, temple prostitution, orgies, open sexuality. Look at gay pride. Men and women kissing and being just disgusting in public and wearing, you know, underwear, framing their hard-ons and balls and everything. I mean, seriously. We got gay pride right here in Denver. And when that goes on, I stay away from downtown. I don't want anything to do with it. The world is starting to parade sin more and more and more. Grand Kadument is disgusting. I appreciate a black woman who herself is pretty, who has a commitment to godliness, and she can look in on that. And she's not self-righteous. She stated to me, the reason I liked your wine women and song videos is because I could relate to all the stuff you said you did. The only people that were hard on me for that video were self-righteous, stuck-up, sorry, American jerk women. Women from across the ocean watched that and said, wow, an American who's really honest and talks about his own faults, that takes guts. Because their impression of American men and women is that were cocky, claimed to have it all together with glaring hypocrisies. I'm meeting quality people on this channel. So if I lose a few viewers that are offended because they're not Christians or they can't stomach what I have to say, you know, I don't want to be obnoxious. I don't want to lose viewers, but as you say, you can't please everybody. We need to understand something. This stuff going on in Barbados is no different than the Mardi Gras in New Orleans. I've watched cops. Remember cops? Cops, and they had New Orleans and Mardi Gras. And women up on the upper balconies pulling up their shirts, pulling their pants down. I mean, it's craziness. 
People get really mad when I say alcoholism opens the door for demonic activity, but it is true. Drugs, vice, all that addictive stuff opens the door for the devil to just have heyday. And when men and women start drinking and getting stupid, they just lose all inhibition and they just do things that those same people on Monday morning at work would play politically correct and, ooh, we don't want to offend anybody. But then you see them out there on the street in Mardi Gras and it's like, whoa. And you know the same people in those orgies in, in, in Barbados and those same people in Mardi Gras will look at us and go, Oh, you're one of those Jesus freaks. You're one of those Bible fanatics. Um, what are you? <laughs> you got your pants down and you're masturbating in the streets and some strange woman you don't even know is rubbing her boobs in your face. Nude. Do you know what would happen in Denver if I had a girlfriend and we disrobed right in front of each other and danced all sexually and sensually? We would be arrested by the Denver Police Department so fast. And the government in Barbados does nothing because it brings in a billion dollars. Fasten your seatbelts, Christians, because we're going to see this happen more and more and more. Governments are losing money. Economies are having problems, but sin is selling. Gambling, alcohol, sexual immorality, false religion, American cultural Christianity. Yeah. Joel Osteen, Joyce Myers, Benny Hinn, Rick Warren. Lots and lots of Christians making big fat money because they've made themselves household icons and their salaries are no alone are enough to make the average Christian man or woman repulsed. People will say, Pacific, why are you equating Grand Cadouman and Mardi Gras with modern evangelical Christian stuff on TV? Because it's all the same. Ministry declaring the truth as it is in the Bible, pointing towards Jesus as the only way, the truth, and the life. You're going to lose popularity. You're not going to reel in the big money. And you're not going to have people partying around you. Nobody's going to have a holiday called the Grand Jesus Day and generate a billion dollars. The cynics out there, oh, the Grand Jesus Day, what are we going to do? Sit around and pray? <laughs> That's dumb. Do you see where I'm going with this? What do you think God thinks when he looks at Grand Cadouman or Mardi Gras? Or Americans? Americans pursuing materialism, pursuing their 401k, padding their bank accounts, remodeling and redecorating their home and basically carrying themselves in an attitude because of their degree and their possessions. How do you think God looks at all of this? You think he smiles and winks and says, wow, it's so neat to see people doing this. I think God is sad. I think that God looks down and says, you know, I made this world and these people don't want me. I can't get my arms around that, viewers, until I look at myself. I've been through rejection I know I haven't been wanted. And when people do want me, most of the time it's to exploit. We in America have learned to exploit. Most relationships today are about exploiting. How much money do you make and how hot is your body? If you're hot, I'll give you my wallet. Not too many relationships are based on love today. And God is up there in heaven saying... I'm trying to get your attention. I love you. And we ignore it. Videos like Pacific's in the last few weeks, they're not going to get a million views. They're going to lose people. But when Jesus stopped all the miracles, when Jesus started talking hard truth, 
when he started confronting the religious leaders, when he said, you didn't come to hear what I had to say. You came because you had it, your loaves and were full. In other words, you got a free food day. Remember, Palm Sunday. Hosanna, blessed is you, comes in the name of the Lord. Master, tell these people to be quiet. Jesus turns around and says, no. If they don't speak out, the rocks will. That is a statement worth studying and unpacking all by itself. That the grand presence of God wrapped up in human flesh was walking, or riding a donkey on Palm Sunday, and a week later, one of the greatest songs that elicits sadness is the Via Dolorosa, the way of suffering that Jesus walked down. Look, Pacific is no more here for popularity contests. Pacific does his videos and says, I'm going to speak what is on my heart. And we'll let God take care of the results. If I reach three or four or five people or 200 people that really get something out of this and it causes them to tighten up. Remember the insurance? Need insurance? Tighten up. Pick up truck? Tighten up. When I have viewers write me and say, because of you, I've been reading the Bible more. Because of you, I've turned off the TV. How about the woman that wrote me and said, because of watching your video on feminized, feminized women, I'm learning to be more gracious and loving and sweet to my husband and not rude to him. So if that's what my channel does, okay. When Venus writes me and says, you're doing the work of God. When I have people coming out that are strong Christian women and men and they're not feminist and rude and judgmental and trying to control me, I find myself suddenly going, gosh, I really want to change for the better. My channel has attracted people from around the world. I want to go to Barbados. She told me, and there is not a love thing going on here, folks. I love her as a sister. I would love to spend time with a Negro family in another country who loves God <clears throat> and benefit from that. Buy my own food, carry my own weight, even help in the household there, and stay there for a while. Because I want to learn something. I want to see foreign places and exotic faces and yet know that we follow the same God. That's exciting to me. She said to me, I would talk to my pastor about finding you lodging. I don't have my own place. If I did, I would give you all the hospitality and would even fund your plane ticket. So that you wouldn't have to be burdened with anything. I would like to get you as far away from Colorado as possible. Wow. I wrote her and said, I'll pay for my own food. Give me a couch or a floor and a living room. I'll take it. She said, I would cook for you. I would. <laughs> I'm meeting quality people on this channel. That keeps me going. That keeps me going because this channel is not a waste of time. I think one of the best things I did with this channel without even realizing it, and I didn't even know it because when I was going on about subjects and ranting and stuff, I saw it, thought, you know what? <laughs> These MGTOW people were perched all over my channel. I didn't think anything of it. Then as time went on, I suddenly noticed that, wow, a lot of these people that are being rude are from that. The best thing I ever did was take on MGTOW and start getting them out of here. I'm sorry, but I since changed one of my views. Hell, if all I'm doing is attracting a bunch of pigeons that poo all over everything, 
kind of time to get them out of there. I like dialogue and I like my viewers talking back and forth with other people. I don't always get in there. I don't want to be a mother hen on my channel. There's still some video where there's this woman and these guys are going back and forth for almost a year now on something about the feminism. <laughs> it's like, I said, you know, maybe we ought to all meet for coffee. This is this has just become hysterical. I'm also going to be very honest about something. I didn't start with this intention, but it's... Because of my channel and the influence it's having, I'm starting to say, God, use this channel to possibly open a door to get me out of here. Pacific still wants to leave the country. I have many reasons for that. One of my biggest reasons is not for marriage. One of my biggest reasons is I want to sit on another shore somewhere and experience a different way of life. I've noticed something. I've done some reading about very little. The reading about Alzheimer's and old men and women and, you know, things. They were saying that <clears throat> if people stop challenging themselves to try new things, they're more likely to get Alzheimer's and a host of problems. You know, we all want the same bus route year after year, that comfortable. I have been getting in a different bus almost every day this week because mine, I've written up buses, written up this, written up that. The mechanics have to take it in and fix it. No, I didn't break it. These are buses I get into, and I'm like, man, this isn't wrote up. These lights don't work. The buzzers don't work, blah, blah, blah. But doing different routes and going into parts of the city I'm not familiar with and learning, ooh, that right turn sucks. We need to go a block up and turn there because there's just too much traffic there to turn that corner safely. Challenge keeps your mind alive and it keeps you on your sharp edge. I wouldn't mind moving to a culture where you got to get water out of a spring and you just sit in a basin in your house and scrub yourself and just take a pot and rinse yourself and an old flush toilet. You know, I can do that. I prayed to God the other day. I said, Lord, I think that my business here in Colorado is really done. Now it's just a matter of time of what, what you want me to do. A lady even came up to me at work. She's one who's always been kind to me. She's dating a guy who's a multimillionaire. I said, wow. <clears throat> She's older than me. And I said, that's remarkable. She goes, you wouldn't know he's rich. He's not hoity-toity. They get along good. She told me a week ago, she goes, i got to be honest, when you first started here, I thought... That Pacific, he's different. And I said, what do you mean by that? And she goes, you're not like other guys at all. She goes, but as time went on, I saw that, wow, you're actually different in a good way, but I'm not used to that. I said, do you really mean that? She goes, oh, you're not like any of these guys in here. She said, I can see why you don't fit, and I can see why you're not getting a date. She said, this area is... This is not for you. Men have been a certain way for so long in this country. Everybody expects them to be that way. And when they're not, man, do the insults go fly in my direction. By the way, I'm going to be vain, but I like my long hair and I'm not cutting it. It's slowly straightening out, and I like to look better. Having my hair short with my thick glasses makes me look geeky and dorkish. I've had several people in the last couple days say, you need to cut your hair, and I just smile and say, nope. 
I don't want to fit in here anymore. I'm done trying. I had my head shaved last year. I just don't want to look like that anymore. But Barbados is not the only place. There's places around the world that do customs and traditions that have just descended into the urinal. The septic tank, the toilet, the biffy, the water closet, the loo. And the problem is, is that we're like the frog in the kettle. You throw a frog in boiling hot water, it's going to jump out. But if you throw the frog in the water and turn the heat up slowly, it'll die. And that's what's happening to Americans and what's happening globally. People are getting used to sin. It's been introduced and it's pushing our boundaries little by little. If you want proof of that, look at what's on TV today and go ask some of the older people back in the 50s if that would have been allowed on television back then. And the answer is no. They wouldn't have watched it. I like my viewers and I like my channel. And I haven't done it on purpose, but I'm talking about subjects to encourage my viewers to think and to get deeper. And a few weeks ago, I needed to change the focus. I was getting too caught up in the junk with MGTOW and trolls. And it's funny, a few weeks has gone by and all of a sudden I'm like, why did I do that? That was dumb. I'm growing too, folks. I learned if you got a channel, you just make it work. Ignore those people. You don't owe anybody any justification or rationalization for your views or anything. You don't need to, you don't need to be accountable to them. I'm feeling more sure of myself, and it's a nice feeling. I still want to go to Barbados because I would go to church at Venus, and I would not be sitting in that grand cadumen. I wouldn't even want to be there. I want to see Maharani, but that's out of the question, unfortunately. The only way that that would work is if I was a multimillionaire and was able to go and pluck her out of her circumstances or university and say, all right, let's go to Cebu. But both of us have accepted and realized the reality that God isn't going to give Pacific a million dollars just for Pacific to have and do what he wants. But I have been asking God, do you have a purpose for me beyond this? Because you know my heart. And if there's any way I go to an island or by the ocean and to a foreign country and make it, I'm in. But I thought I'd share that with you viewers. And I'm going to share more and more what viewers tell me because it's important for you to know other people's minds and other people's cultures. And I want to take, do a personal thank you to Venus Star for providing that information. Because it's something we need to look at. We need to be worldly wise. We need to know what's going on out there. Barbados is a beautiful place. She's described some of the flora and the fauna and the geography. And it's like, oh man. Long time ago, Pacific always said my dream would be to live on an island. Even if it was simple and it was crude, I'd love to live on an island. Crude meaning, you know, simple, primitive. I'd kind of like to live in a place where I could go shirtless year-round. Except when it's time to go to church. Anyways, this is something to think about, folks. This is Pacific signing off. Bye-bye.